Sport requires effort, sweat and strong will, and Macron knows it. A leading global company with the Italian DNA in the production and sale of sportswear, when Macron first entered the sports world in 1971, he was a small yet strong player. Since then, Macron has been growing at a very fast pace, supporting teams, sportsmen and women at all levels, working hard to supply them with the best technical products to help improve their performances. With over 4 million pieces of stock available in our Italian warehouse, including an extensive range of on-field, off-field and free-time products, we cater for everyone from amateurs to professional sporting organisations. Ranked third most prominent football brand by UEFA, Macron keeps expanding its presence worldwide and now even includes Croatian giants Hajduk Split, HNL Prva Liga outfit NK Šibenik, as well as Melbourne-based Croatian community club NK Bunker, amongst its ever-growing international family. And there are more to come. Work hard, play harder, Macron, your next teamwear partner. For more information, visit our website at www.macronvic.com.au or call us now on 1-800-MACRON. Welcome back to the Ozcrow Soccer Show. It is part two of our inaugural episode. Tornchi Prusats and Josip Zilic with you tonight. Um, apologies to all the viewers. Um, we've had some technical issues, as you do. You always have some, some you've got to have some form of teething problems, don't you, Josip, when you first start off? Oh, we won't, we won't human, mate. We're just trying our best. But <laughs> you know what? It'll get better each episode and uh, look, technic technical issues are things that we're going to have to d deal with. And, you know, with me 1,700 kilometres away from you, we can't be in the same yeah. room, but we'll, we'll work it out, man. Big shout out to Macron and to Pleme, our business advertisers for episode one. A big shout out to our episode sponsor, HNK Gorspich Bears from Melbourne. They, were f they featured in our club in feature. They're all in the um, first part, if you like, part one. Um, once we sort this out, we do have the recording and we will have the full recording up available on both our Facebook pages and also our YouTube channel as well, our exclusive YouTube channel. Head over to YouTube, click the subscribe button, hit the little bell, um, whatever you're meant to do that you're meant to do on YouTube. And um, it is the Oz Crow Soccer Show. Now, Yossi, but without further ado, it's time for our VIP guest. But before we yeah. bring our VIP guest, now this man has been around pretty much at all the uh, Croatian clubs in um, in Victoria. Next week, mate, um, our club in focus, another big club who are going to be celebrating their 25th anniversary anniversary um, this year. Mate, do you want to do the um, honours and reveal who that club is? It's uh, none other than HNK O'Connor Knights uh, from Canberra, oh, yes. from the capital city themselves. Uh, they've done a lot of work in the last few years at that club, and um, we're, we're delighted to get Alex and the, and the team on board uh, next week and look forward to hearing what's coming out of, the, out of Canberra itself. Yeah, no, that should be fantastic. O'Connor Knights are back in the big time. They um, are back in the NPL, the ACT NPL competition, joining another Croatian-backed club, Canberra Croatia, formerly known as Deacon Croatia, um, and prior to that, Canberra Croatia. So they've done a full circle and gone back to their original name, which is great, great to see. Um, so ACT um, NPL competition next this year will have two Croatian-backed clubs. But uh, it's yep. time now to, to introduce our VIP guest, our special guest for tonight, none other than Mickey C, the legend that he is. Mickey, thank you for joining us here on the Ozcrow Soccer Show. Great to have you here. Pleasure being on, guys. Thanks for the opportunity to be part of your inaugural debut show. Yeah, and congratulations again yeah. on the debut of this great concept. 
thanks, Mickey. Pretty... And that uh, it would, wouldn't be the same without you, mate. Because uh, when we when we <laughs> want to make an impact on on show one, we need a big personality. Yeah. And yeah. here we go. Two coin. Two coin. None other, Mickey. Mate. So. <laughs> I think now, you guys I mean... have got to cover well and truly, mate. Yeah. No, no words. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mickey, uh, do tell us because you did correct us if you're uh, if we're wrong. You started your coaching career at the Gorse Beach Bears. You're seeing your senior coaching career, that is. Is that right? Yeah, correct. And, uh, yeah. Tell us, tell us what it was like coaching the lads down at uh where were you guys back then? You weren't at Churchill Reserve, were you? No, so Wallace, we were um, off off uh, in, I think off uh, Barry Road Flemington. or something. It is somewhere actually diagonal almost across from Hume City's ground now, to be honest. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. the Gibbs the Gib Reserve. I think you're right, Joe. I think yeah, you're yeah, right, Oscar. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, it was great. The opportunity, obviously, is to continue having a kick, I suppose. And um, they obviously asked me if, if I'd be willing to sort of do a player coach role. And um, as as Dario was on earlier and just echoing his words, a truly family club, um, the opportunity to still have a kick and and, and try try to coach and and you know earn some stripes in that department. And look, it was great. We had some great times, and I made some fantastic friendships that I still hold today. You know, and um, yeah. a big part of of your life on you know the day to day sort of thing. Some fantastic people, very passionate, and again, like I said, very very family orientated club. And and I wish them all the successes in what they're doing. And moving forward, um, like I say, great people, great club. Now, mate, um, let's turn our attention to to Sunday that just went by. Um, it was a hot one, very, very hot one. And, um, <laughs> and I, I had my uh, colleague from the Football Out West show, Craig Filer, pop down there. And uh, yeah, um, being the Welshman Craig, that yeah. he is, he goes, he couldn't last too long because it was very hot. But he did take some very some footage, so we appreciate that. In fact, we'll run that in the background um, while we're talking. Yeah. Um, um, and that's uh, that. There we go. That was some of the footage, I think, that was there. Um, a decent-sized crowd, considering the conditions. But um, I guess, more importantly, it was a, it was an opportunity for the four NPL clubs, um, or the three NPL clubs and um, North Geelong, the NPL2 club, to to play a lot of younger players. Um, from Dandenong City's point of view, was, was this an opportunity to just get some of the cobwebs out um, or, or, yeah. or try a few of the young guys in? Um, how did you approach this uh, this tournament? Well, first and foremost, I guess, like like probably many clubs that are experiencing some of the challenges with this COVID thing now, I mean, coming to the weekend, a lot of clubs were depleted and we were no different, I suppose, in terms of people suffering um, from the whole merry period, if you want to call it that. And, and yeah. obviously along the way, you know, becoming another COVID number, I suppose, call what you want. Um now, you know, with, with all of that, there was obviously a, a challenge, needless to say, um, and there's not much you can do about that, I suppose. But, yes, at the same time, it's an opportunity to give opportunities to some young boys, um, road test some things. It um, obviously was early part, oh, I guess it was early in the season because, I mean, I know we were only back for a week like most other clubs, so it was challenging, and then you throw the – the heat as a factor, but you know, it, 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 it is, it's something that's been a part of our community for many years. And I think, as you said earlier, a lot of clubs take, take this tournament as a platform where you can give some young boys opportunities, work on your game. It's, it's another couple of games that you can put under your belt. Um, again, it would have been better or under, under a bit more comfortable circumstances, I suppose, but we can't control the weather. But needless to say, we still got value out of it, and that's what's important, I suppose, you know, from a footballing point of view. What's it, Pam? We lost your tip. Don't tell me it's oh, happened again. Yeah. No, 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 we got him, we got him. No, that's yeah. right, sorry. It was a little bit of, <laughs> was a, little bit of a, a bit of a delay. <laughs> So when, um, Queensland is about an hour behind us. Isn't oh, it? It, is, it is an hour <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. So, but, well, from your from your perspective, watching the games on the weekend, uh, was there was there any players or any any specific game? Oh, we've lost that for you. 
Um, sorry, I missed that. Just, but I think what you're alluding to, I uh, might have captured. But yeah, North Geelong, the guys that won. I mean, obviously got a very soft spot for North Geelong naturally with the relationship you had with them, and I was really wrapped for for the young squad to go on and beat us on a penalty shootout, um, and then go on and beat St Albans Saints in the final. And I was really, really chuffed to see them win the win the trophy, which is nice with a very youthful side. And um, yeah, so they again quite a few boys in there that again it's difficult. You don't know all their names, but yeah. that impressed yeah. me and, and um, did well. And it was a good opportunity for them to play against, you know, obviously senior footballers in in an environment such as that. And and of course, naturally, to win is always a lot more sweeter. And I was really happy for them. It was great to see them get up and um, win the trophy. Yeah, very good. Now, Mickey, um, uh, this year, let's Sorry, let's turn our attention to the NPL competition. It kicks off on Friday. Well, actually, kicks off on Thursday, seventeenth of February, um, with the big Greek derby, South Melbourne taking on Heidelberg at Lakeside Stadium. But all eyes will be on on the Frank Hollihan Soccer Complex the following night, um, Friday, eighteenth of February, when um, the big Croatian derby. What better way um, to kick off um, the twenty twenty two season? Dandenong City hosting Melbourne Knights. What can we expect on, on, on the night, apart from fireworks and lots of on-field action <laughs> and stuff like that? <laughs> Look, I think, of course, like um, we've seen in the past, is obviously a very passionate but friendly rivalry, which is, which is I think, always first and foremost. And, you know, two Croatian sides that, you know, obviously Melbourne Knights with the status that they have, as we all know through history. And, nope, and you know, Danong City, passionate, um, kind of uh, young MPL in terms of uh, years in that competition. Um, you know, obviously, it's, it's going to be a game that is um, naturally three points are up for grabs. Yeah. Uh, once the game commences, it's, it's it's all about that, I guess, at the end of the day. But like, like I always say, I think it's important that the game's played in, the, in a spirit that represents what we're all about as a community and, and hopefully the people get out to Frank Houlihan to um, support the occasion and support the clubs in involved and, and uh, I guess, make a statement in terms of what the Croatian community can offer football in Victoria. Yeah, excellent. Now, at Dandenong, you've had, a, had a, um, off the field, you've had a, a major, major change um, from, from in the boardroom. Um, Tony Dorotic, the legendary Tony Dorotic, and, mm. and he's someone who's served not just Dandenong City, but Tony has been a, a great servant of... of of um, the Australian Croatian football scene, having been involved for several years um, on the Sarvis committee, but um, he he also has um, a, uh, well, he stepped down and and uh, we've got Josip back. Josip, you're back. <laughs> I don't know what's going Big. on. We don't know. <laughs> the internet gremlins. Um, Robert Yakovlevich is is back after about a 15 year, I think. Um, uh, absence from the role of president. He was previously president. Um, I mean, that's great to see Robert back. Tony obviously needed a little bit of a break. And how's the transition been from from Tony from the Tony era to the Robert era? Well, look, I, I think one thing. Firstly, uh, I mean, as you pointed out, no one can sum up in less than twenty five words what Tony's um, done for the club and crushing football in the community. There's no doubt about his presence and. Um, and obviously the time that he's committed in so many years. And for what it's worth, I don't think you'll be able to keep Tony away too far if that makes sense. So I think he's <laughs> he's still got he's still got a, a role to play in the club and, and he's he's a very shy you know, character. Yeah, <laughs> look, man, I mean I think at the end of the day, you know, it's individuals like that, you know, in club land you don't you don't want to lose, and, and I think that'll never happen. I mean, never say never, but I'd like to think it wouldn't. But then again, you know, Robbie comes in with, with Ivers O'Clodes uh, at his side. Um, again, two very passionate, um, you know, they love their club. They're very, how should I say, astute, and they don't know what they're, what they're doing, and, and they've got a vision for the club, what they like to do, which is fantastic, but... One thing I've noticed in this short time that I've been there since um, coming across last year there, you know, they're a very passionate and honest club and, and I think mm -hmm. that's that's something that I'd like to think will, will work well in terms of them achieving the goals that they've set for themselves. There's a lot of humility there, which is important in my eyes. And, and, um, and, and you know, there's, there's people that truly 
love the club and, and want to do the right things and, and help wherever they can. And and um, and really, the bottom line is to, o- over time, um, do whatever we can. Um, everyone plays a role to to establish Dandy City as a as a an NPL club that you know mm-hmm. a competitive NPL club that can maintain the status in that competition and, and not just maintain status over years to come. Hopefully, become a force and someone that can really make a statement in the football community of Victoria. Um, yeah. One thing I said to many people when I did arrive, it reminded me of North Geelong a lot. You know, in terms of just the the pure passion and honesty of the people that love their club, and um, and I really wish wish that um, they can achieve the goals that they've set for themselves o- over the years to come, and hopefully, I can play a small part in helping them achieve that. Yeah, I, I, I think they look. They've got the right person for the job in terms of connecting with their people, and um, I'm delighted to see you at, at the helm at a club like Dandy City. Um, and in, in saying what you were talking about before, the way they, they're setting up and, and getting themselves going, I, I noticed a, a distinct change in some of their junior structure. I guess at some point in time we'll talk at, at, at depth about Dandy City, but just the way they've gone about setting up their teams with their coaching staff and, and, the, and the structure within, it looks like they've addressed some issues that they wanted to do in that regard. And I hope that's that's teeing up into the pyramid and towards senior football and, and in the way you're structured as well. Yeah, well, I think um, Lubin Polinch has come on board as a football director and um, he comes on board with, with a great CV, um, a dandy city person. Again, the passion and and the support he has for the club goes back many, 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 many years. And um, and he's come on board to restructure this setup and, and hopefully put things in place that I guess the end game is to develop a pathway, uh, an honest, true pathway, where you have players that go through your junior system can represent the club at senior level and hopefully beyond naturally like every kid's dream would be and um and and, and i think all the people involved and me included uh, are big believers in that and um you know i think at the end of the day sometimes you might even appear to take a step backwards to take two forwards i guess it, it's always challenging um change is always sometimes scary for some people but i think the big picture if if people sort of take that on board will help them understand what what we're trying to achieve as a club as a whole and um and in the short time it's been a couple months only but Duma's has done a fantastic job with with getting some great people involved in the coaching staff and and just trying to add small elements of professionalism mm-hmm. you know um yeah. you know it's 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 easy to say we want this, 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 and all these other things. Um, it, I guess, you know, we all wish for many things that we can't have right now. But I guess I've always sort of said, you know, if you can get a 300-page document from one of the big clubs of the world and, and take five of those pages and put them in your little world and make it work, it, it can only be a good thing for what you're trying to do. And yeah. and um, so far, it, it's been great and the response has been really good. And, and um, I really hope that, we start to see some of these successes over time, and um, I really truly believe if we if, if we stick honest to to the actual um, the journey that's been set out, there's no reason why you cannot create this honest pathway that we talk about and have individuals from your junior mm-hmm. junior ranks represent your club at a senior level. That's looking at the um, future, and certainly the future looks good with everything being put into place and a great structure. But um, as far as the senior team, um, we don't have the luxury of time. And I guess if you look at the season last year, it was a really disappointing year. Um, 18 games with eight rounds left. Dandenong City was second last. St. Albans, Dinamo were bottom. So thank God for the COVID lockdowns. (laughs) I think the end of the season prematurely saved those two Croatian clubs. But jokes aside, um, it's, it's a tough competition. It is a tough league. It's quite cutthroat, particularly at the bottom. Has Dandy Nong City got a team that will not only survive the cut this year, but do well? You know, well, look, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously a, a question that Tough no question. one can ever <laughs> put their hand on their heart and, and answer, but but you know what your goal is. And I think we as a club have set a, 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 you know, a goal for ourselves, a realistic one, and that is to build a squad that's going to be competitive in this competition. Um, basically, 
not be in this dog fight um, down the bottom of the table. Yeah. As um, unfortunately they've experienced for a, a few years now, and um, and I, I personally believe what we've put together so far in terms of personnel, um, in and obviously naturally like it's always budget related and with the points and all these other different variables that you have to sort of um, work within. But I believe that the lads that we've got can um, achieve what we set for ourselves. And naturally, yeah. I'm always greedy. I mean, I want to win every game, you know, but yeah. um, otherwise, why play football? But, um, you know, again, I'm realistic. I know that's not going to be the case. Yeah. But um, I, I truly believe that we can be competitive and achieve the goals that we set for ourselves in this competition and, and stabilise the club and move in an upward direction over time to become, like I said earlier in this piece, uh, a respected NPL one club in this um, state. Yeah. Now, a question I want to ask you, Mickey, because you've been a coach at Knights, you've been a coach at Dinamo, you've been a coach at yep. North Geelong, you've been a coach at, 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 um, at Dandy now. Um, you're like the village bike, aren't you? Everyone's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when no. you put it like that way, you know, put it like that. But, but you're in a really good position to be able to <laughs> – you're in a really good position to be able to sort of determine. Now, is it hard running a club in the West, like trying to attract players because of the competition? Is it hard trying to attract quality players to a regional club like North Geelong? Or is it hard to attract players to a club like in the southeast suburbs like Dandenong City that has got a few, you know, really tough, tough comp competitors in the, you know, Dandenong Thunder? In a concentrated um, area. Yeah. yeah, very yeah. concentrated area. Where have you found it out of all of those four Croatian clubs the hardest to maybe attract quality players? You know, budgets yeah. taking into account well, all I of think, that. Look, I mean, I think North Geelong was the most challenging one in in that respect um obviously you know a modest budget the distance and 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 what north geelong is doing now and we talked about this in, even with yosip years ago i think this is the direction that's going to be probably the most successful for north geelong like to work within your region um yeah. and, and nurture talent within that region because of the challenges you face um, then you talk about the West. Again, another concentrated area with many clubs. Mm. And, you know, budgets, uh, unfortunately, in this competition with some of the things that some of the clubs do, it's, it's, it makes, you know, it creates this false economy that, you know, in my opinion, I mean, look, every player wants to earn as much as they can, of course, but I just think some of the things that do go on make it difficult for some of the clubs that don't have those um, budgets that some of these others do flex every year. Um, so Melbourne Knights and Snormans, you know, down the road from each other in terms of the Croatia side of things, but then there's many other clubs in the same competition not far from them, you know. You've got Green Gully, you know, you've got Hume not far away, you've got Heidelberg not far away. So, like, oh, okay, they fall under the north, I guess, to a certain degree. So they yeah. have their challenges in themselves. But then you go across the Dandy City, what I'm discovering, obviously, in the last short, well, short time now, as you said earlier, I mean, there's a lot of clubs out there. Um, Dandy Thunder, Bentley Greens, Oakley, and naturally Dandy City um, in a very small little precinct and Eastern Lions too, of course. And then you've got some big MPL2 clubs too, you know what I mean? So yeah. um, it, it is it is difficult. It is difficult. And um, having so many clubs in, you know, obviously the MPL competition in a, in a close proximity, you know, it makes it difficult. Players will bounce around and um, and that sort of makes it challenging. But at the end of the day, you don't make no excuses. You try to do the best you can with, with um, the tools that you've been given and, and the parameters that you have to work within. And, and and that's what it is all about at the end of the day, I guess, you know. I mean, you know, one thing's for certain, you, you want to create a culture where it's honest and every individual that represents the club um, does everything they can do on a week-to-week -week basis to ensure they are putting on the best show for the club they represent. Um, and that's all we can ask for at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Mickey, um, Josip, any questions for our guest tonight? Any more questions? No, I, I think Lou's got the the, the vegetable ready for him. He has to get home and have schnitzel and potatoes. <laughs> and, and, Honestly, I had to I had to pull over on the side here, mate, on the way home from training. Mate. So I don't run too late, mate. 
<laughs> actually, you had a training game today, did you, or something like that? No, it? we actually we were meant to play uh, Oakley. We ended up cancelling it because, uh -huh. again, lack of players. Um, yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, just made a decision that the the cons far outweigh the pros of having a hit out, unfortunately. Mm. And, and this is one of the challenges that we're finding along with all clubs in um, this current period that we find ourselves in. But, you know, we've got to stay positive. And like I always say, people who've got through wars will get through this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. Mickey, thank you very much for pulling over to the side of the road and uh, yeah. and not not um, not being a menace on the roads, driving while you're talking to us. <laughs> no, it's been a it's real uh, pleasure, lads. It's been yeah, a real pleasure. Good on you, mate. Absolute enjoyed it. pleasure Thanks having, having again, you. No, I just wanted to add again, look, look, best of luck. I think it's a great concept what you guys are doing, I think, from a Croatian community point of view and obviously the sport mad people that we do have within our community, I think there's a fantastic platform. So Svakama Trust and, and wish you all the successes and I'm sure with you two boys at the helm, it can only be a successful um, experiment turning into hopefully a platform for many, many years. As long as our internet mate, mate. connection doesn't catch COVID like it did tonight, I reckon. I think it's a problem. sponsorship in the internet but industry. COVID's now yeah, got nah. into, yeah, into COVID's got into the internet now, so far out. <laughs> it's yeah. everywhere. Why not? It's got everywhere else. Why not there too, mate? Why oh, there's out. a Croatian word that, that that starts with J that would be very, very appropriate right now, but I'm not gonna use <laughs> yes. it. Anyway. Anyway, Mickey, all the very best, mate, and we look forward to seeing you in the NPL, which kicks off in a month's time on Friday, 18th of um, February. A very good month, that, uh, by the way. Um, and that's 7.30 at Frank Hollihan Reserve, the big Croatian derby. Dandenong City taking on the Melbourne Knights. Uh, we look forward to, hopefully, an the uninterrupted best, NPL yeah, season. Thanks, and, and again, wish all the Croatian clubs in the NPL um, one and, and the yep. clubs in the lower leagues, North Geelong, all the best for this season. I hope it's as successful as we, they all wish it to be. And, um, and yeah, good luck to all of them. Thanks, uh, Mickey stuff, C. Man. Except for round one and two, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Round two against Dynamo. Hold that thought. It could be a big one coming up. Could be a big show. Yeah. yeah. Something in the pipeline. All right, Mickey, take care. We better let you go back to your uh, family no and uh, enjoy the Vecera. Thanks, yeah, guys. Like much, much, all the best. Hey, Good on you, Mickey C. Always a pleasure having the man on board. Uh, got some great comments. John Bilosh sums it up beautifully. He says, how good it would be to have all four Croatian clubs back in the NPL and being competitive. Um, and uh, Dario Medjugorje, who uh, was yeah. with us earlier tonight, says, Mickey the legend gave the Bears strong foundation in the early days. Once I think it also says something like, um, Ivica Petrlic, who who, um, who teed up tonight's um, 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 club sponsorship or, or, or club in focus. Thank you, Ivica. He says, once a bear, always a bear. And there's a oh, nice little yeah. medal there, you know, just to yeah. add it. Um, mate, um, that brings us to a, well, an interruptive well, an event. first episode, an eventful one. <laughs> an eventful one. Uh, we probably Absolutely. wouldn't have gone over, over time like we did had, had uh, no. the internet not played its part, but um, I think we, we finished to. strong, so it was good. Folks, don't, don't. Um, next week, it's all about the O'Connor Knights. They are our club in focus. We were also hoping to tonight have an announcement regarding our uh, um, special guest next week, but uh, we haven't got that um, uh, oh, we'll yet. We'll build the drama of... through the week, mate. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to to um, um, announce that in the coming days. But uh, yeah, look, thank you, folks, to, to everyone for being so patient with us for this very very first episode. Um, it was a, it was a tough one um, with all the well, with all the uh, internet hoo ha going on, but uh, we'll be back. Stronger, bigger and better episode two next week, the Australia Day edition on Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Or um, if you're watching from Queensland, you'll see what time is it up there? 7.30? Oh, it's now uh, eight, eight minutes to nine, so we're an hour behind, mate. Hour behind. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, mate, take care and um, all the very best up on the Gold Coast. Hey there, luck notch. Good on you. Uh, you've been watching and tuning in to the Ozcrow Soccer Show, the inaugural Ozcrow Soccer Show. Um, subscribe to our exclusive YouTube channel. Um, and the full, we'll have both parts one and parts two up there by before the end of the evening. Make sure to uh, jump on and, and um, um, watch the first part if you missed the first part. And also, we're urging you all to sign up as a member. Go to www.patreon.com 
facebook.com forward slash Oz Crow Soccer Show. Massive, massive shout out to Vladimir Zetovic and to Mark Maric, who are both members. So we've got two members and we'd love to see some more members. Until next week, folks, all the very, very best. And thank you once again for tuning in to the Oz Crow Soccer Show. La Kunoch. Thank you.